Hello everyone, and thank you for joining me today. Um, I will be giving a brief lecture on Blockadia, uh, its theories, its evidence, and practice. But before I do that, um, I'd like to give you a little bit of background about myself. Um, I was born Felicio Francisco Lopez Rivera. I am the son of Cuban Criollos, Latin-born Spaniards, and ex-African slaves. Um, for reference, um, slavery was abolished in Cuba in 1866. Uh, I am an archaeologist. I was born in the 19th century uh, in Cuba. However, one day uh, I was struck by lightning uh, and it killed me. Funny to see myself here today in such a strange time, uh, but the reason I was able to join you today is because uh, I was resurrected and given a new name uh, by members of Blockadia. Uh, my new name is Little Brown Wonder, or LBW for short, uh, and I have the privilege and task of archiving Blockadia's culture and history. Um, and, and recently I've been uh, ordered to begin contact with Earthlings, which is why I'm here speaking with all of you today. Now, as I said, I was uh, struck by lightning in the 19th century, um, but given uh, a new uh, life and uh, a new sight, or double vision, um, similar to what W.E.B. Du Bois would talk about his idea of double consciousness, uh, I'm not only able to see through different perspectives and representations, but I'm also now able to see through space and time. And uh, like I said, I'm an archaeologist. I document the uh, daily happenings, the people, places, and things, uh, and uh, the whereabouts of, of different objects uh, on Blockadia. So I capture many field studies uh, into drawings and store them into the boxes that you see here. Alright, so I'll take some time um, digging into some of the theories uh, that exist around this mysterious land. So, Blockadia is a geological mass that hovers over the Caribbean islands. It's believed to have formed in the late 15th century, the moment Christopher Columbus set foot on San Salvador. Many see this as a direct response to the colonization of the New World. Author Juno Diaz uh, talks about this idea and calls it the New World's Fuku, or curse. Uh, since then, the structure has been detected in airspaces around the globe, although many governments and countries have been unable to detect exactly what it is. Early documents show Blockadia's core mission is to serve people of color living throughout the universe and maintain a quote-unquote continuous autonomous zone. So here uh, you can see for reference a map of the Caribbean islands uh, and uh, here you can see uh, the estimated uh, airspace that Blockadia is currently occupying. Here's a Blockadia world map that shows uh, the different environments and some of the characters uh, that inhabit this space. And here you can see a simplified version. It's a large landmass with a supernatural cloud that hovers over and protects uh, the space above it. And a few more examples here. So Blockadia is made up of the remains of people, places, and things. When earthly entities are brought to Blockadia, it changes its atmosphere's molecular makeup, altering its structure and color. It is still unknown how the island is able to float the way that it does, and how it's able to move across the globe so quickly. Uh, however, it does have one property that we are able to pinpoint, and it's carbon capture. 
Uh, currently, carbon capture uh, is a process in which we store uh, carbon underground uh, to limit our CO2 levels in the Earth's atmosphere. Currently, CO2 levels in Earth's atmosphere is above 400 parts per million, the highest it's been in the post-industrial world. Blockadia has created a series of carbon capture vessels that capture the carbon and emit a color and reflect its light. The vessels around the island protect it like a shell, and reflect its light, and make it completely invisible. Here you can see a standard periodic table of elements uh, that uh, are also uh, part of what makes up Blockadia. However, there are a series of extra elements that we do not know where they came from. And a map here from uh, the NASA website showing exactly where our current carbon levels are today and how this drives current uh, climate change. So here's a carbon crystal, or a gate crystal. So as I was saying earlier, it uh, protects Blockadia and reflects its light back. It can be used as a defensive structure. And over time, the light will harden and the crystal will turn into a star. And here are some examples of those stars as well as a defensive crystal block. Now, we've tried to put together, using the most state-of-the-art uh, simulation technologies we have available, to give Earthlings an idea of what this uh, mysterious land looks like. Blockadia has the ability to have a multitude of landscapes and environments juxtaposed next to each other. So what we'll see here uh, is, a, is an artist's rendering. So here you can see the structure of Blockadia and some of its architecture. I'm going to move us through here just for the sake of time. So you can see the vast and tropical landscape immediately next to snow-covered top. some of our gate crystals that have hardened into stars, and you will see them glow in the night sky, as you can see here. So you can see Blockadia is an incredibly vast and complicated world. So that was our theories, but we'll move on to evidence to show that Blockadia has actually been around for much longer than we had originally expected. So we'll look at some known key figures um, that I have brought to talk with you all about. Uh, they're pollinators, we'll look at vision and spectrum, our case study of Super Elliot, and our patron saint Michael Brown. So pollinators are Blockadia's gatekeepers. They're constantly on the watch. They have no gender or origin. Each pollinator has the ability to self-replicate. It is unknown if pollinators die or if they are reconfigured as new clones. They've look, they look very similar to Zapatistas in Chiapas, Mexico. However, pollinators covering acts more as a skin rather than clothing. It is widely believed that they cannot speak but te communicate telepathically. However, I found recent writings in English and Spanish that have surfaced near their cloning centers. 
Here are two depictions of pollinators. So one of their abilities is linking. So they're able to fuse their arms together and create an indestructible bond that protects the island in case of an external threat. Their other ability is what is called light bending, able to take the light from carbon crystals and use them as an attack force in the event of imminent danger. Vision and spectrum look very similar to pollinators, however, uh, they um, are considered the original pollinators, uh, and they used to be one entity. Uh, at some point in time, uh, they split into two, splitting its attributes, um, but still able to be connected telepathically throughout the world. So we have vision on the left and spectrum on the right. Now, spectrum may seem uh, like a familiar word to some of you, and if you've watched any of the Marvel Avengers movies, you may notice that uh, Vision is a character in this universe. However, uh, we do have evidence that Marvel has taken this hero from uh, the mythology of Blockadia. So just to set the record straight. All right, in 2017, individuals throughout the Philadelphia area discovered new abilities. Super strength, telekinesis, teleportation, fluency in black magic. Many of the individuals did not know each other or have much in common, but they all knew that they were people of color. Each person did have dreams or memories of pink and black goo, diamond-shaped stars, and a lot of people dressed like ninjas or zapatistas. Could these people be connected to these mysterious structures? Could they be connected to Blockadia? We'll look at two examples of how Earthlings have gained abilities and integrated into the fabric of Blockadia. My first uh, case study here is Super Elliot. Now, Elliot is a Peruvian immigrant that grew up uh, in the Pennsylvania area, uh, had a normal childhood, and one day realized that he had been given uh, superpowers. He was blacking out uh, and waking up in new places and new forms, having diamonds for eyes, and being able to separate his body into millions of, of of spores being able to teleport through space and time. As you can see here, uh, Blockadians had chosen Elliot, uh, as this is a shrine that was found on the island. Uh, so you can see a portrait of the individual uh, uh, in the painting, as well as um, a 20 sided die on the floor. This is a weapon that was given to Elliot to create portals, diversions, and uh, teleport in the nick of time. The second example I'm going to look at is our patron saint, Michael Brown. So after Michael Brown was killed, Blockadian members decided to bring the island out of hiding and open its doors to the galaxy's people of color. He has very much become a protector and a symbol for the justice that is needed in this world. Ringing around uh, this beautiful uh, homage to um, this young man uh, ring the words of Asada Shakur. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. We must love and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Lastly, I'll take a look at practice, how Blockadia has worked with social movements, established portals, and created work here in Philadelphia. So there's evidence that pollinators have been sent to the U United States to participate in radical movements, such as the Young Lords, the Black Panthers, and Occupy Wall Street. In 2016, 
portals surfaced in Madison, Maine, and in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. They would attach themselves to existing architecture, grow rapidly, and construct their own walls and ceilings. These spaces, deemed portals, were available for people of color, ready to go to Blockadia and discover their true autonomy and power. Recently, evidence has shown that pollinators have been working with stadium stompers, a movement of community residents, temple students, and faculty coming together to stop Temple Stadium and build power in North Philly. Earlier this year, Blockadia endorsed Stadium Stompers and will endorse to continue and support efforts to build community power in North Philadelphia. So here's an example. You can see all the way in the back, there's a black circle of what we believe may be one of our pollinators uh, at a Young Lord's March in the 1970s. And to the left, you'll see a Young Lord's uh, poster laying out the four uh, demands of the party. So a struggle for health, a struggle for food, a struggle for housing, and education. These are four principles that Blockadia uh, strongly believes in. The uh, governing body on Blockadia is the Intergalactic Blockadian Separatist Party. Uh, and they are a uh, political party that is uh, designed to secure the autonomy and power of Blockadia and people of color throughout the universe. So uh, their statement reads, Blockadia is a separatist and political cultural landscape designed as an intergalactic safe space for people of color. It is here for you to gather, learn, and organize together. Please come and take care of yourself and each other. Then we can all set white supremacy on fire. These are some shots of uh, the Blockadia portals that had appeared in Madison, Maine. And here's a shot of its portal appearing in North Philadelphia. The library in the back contains books by Earth's people of color. Lastly, Blockadia has been working with stadium stompers to preserve the radical black tradition and community power that exists in North Philadelphia. Temple University would like to expand west and build a football stadium in a residential neighborhood. And Stadium Stompers has taken the fight to make sure that that does not happen. So Blockadia has worked with artists and organizers uh, with Stadium Stompers to create literature, organize actions, and get the word out. For instance, Blockadia helped design the Stadium Stompers flyer that is used for every event and as a tool to update citizens on current events. And we organize out of the historic Church of the Advocate on 18th and Diamond. Much like Blockadia, the Advocate serves as a brick-and-mortar institution that acts and preserves uh, the power, culture, and desires of African-American communities here in North Philadelphia. And we will continue our fight for the preservation uh, and prosperity for all communities of color in Philadelphia, in the United States, in the world, and abroad. Thank you for coming to take a look at Blockadia. And um, I'll be hanging around after the lecture if anyone would like to talk to me further about uh, practices, ideas, and um, and future happenings. Thank you very much.